Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on appetite control. I'm going to be talking about the two main hormones that regulate appetite. So that includes ghrelin and leptin. And these guys are here to make sure that you either don't get too fat or too skinny. So you don't have too many calories or too few by controlling hunger behavior. So because they're homeostatic hormones, they obviously are going to act on the hypothalamus. So they each act on a different region of the hypothalamus and either trigger hunger, as in the case for ghrelin, or satiety, as in the case for leptin. So let's get into a couple of details about ghrelin here. So ghrelin is our appetite hormone. An easy way to remember this is that when you're hungry, your stomach growls. So GHR for growl, and that is for appetite. All right, so this ghrelin hormone is produced by X cells in the stomach. They release it into the bloodstream and it travels to the lateral hypothalamus in the brain. This then causes the hunger response. So it causes you to go seek and look, at, look for more food. All right, another function of ghrelin is that it's going to prepare the body for this food. So this ghrelin is going to go ahead and act on the stomach itself and it's going to increase gastric motility and gastric acid production to prepare the body for the food that the lateral hypothalamus just ordered. Ghrelin is induced by two major inducers, so hypoglycemia and low body weight. So let's say you have low blood sugar, as in the case for hypoglycemia, or, low, or you're very thin, as in the case of low body weight, you're going to want to fix that by eating more food. An inhibitor for ghrelin includes stomach distension. So if you see over here on the diagram on the right, uh, distending the stomach is going to decrease ghrelin and decrease appetite because you have a bunch of food in the stomach and you don't need any more. All right, so let's hop over to leptin. So leptin is our satiety hormone and it is produced by our white fat. So these white adipose cells over here are going to produce our leptin. And as these cells go bigger and bigger and bigger, they're going to produce more and more leptin. So the fat is kind of doing a negative feedback on itself. So fat produces more leptin. This goes to the ventral medial hypothalamus. Then we're going to get inhibition of food intake and the fats kind of get smaller. So the fat is controlling itself in this case. And an easy way to remember that leptin is produced by fat cells is that I think of L for lipid and L for leptin. And inducers for leptin include insulin and emotional stress. So let's say you have high blood glucose, you're going to have high insulin, and that's going to induce leptin. Say, let's stop eating, our blood sugar is high enough. And then emotional stress, so let's say you're running away from a tiger, you don't have time to think about those yummy blueberries in the bush, you're too busy devoting all your energy to fight or flight. So those are inducers for leptin. So let's not be hungry in these cases. And then inhibitors for leptin include short-term fasting. So let's say you haven't eaten for eight, nine hours, your leptin response is going to be inhibited and ghrelin is going to take over. So both ghrelin and leptin are in your system all the time, just the levels are different. So sometimes ghrelin is higher and you're going to feel hungry and sometimes leptin is higher and you're going to feel satiated. Let's talk about the hypothalamus for a second. So these hormones are produced in the stomach and in the fat, and they're gonna travel up to the hypothalamus, and they're gonna act either on the lateral or the medial hypothalamus. So here in purple, we have the lateral hypothalamus, and here in blue, we have the medial hypothalamus. So what does the lateral hypothalamus react to? That's right, it's gonna to react to ghrelin, so it's gonna cause you to be hungry. Now in this case, the experimenters lesioned it, so they cut the lateral hypothalamus in these mice. What's going to happen to this mouse? Well, it's going to get thinner because now our leptin is our predominant hormone, and it's telling the mouse, I'm full all the time, I don't need to eat, and ghrelin can no longer act on the lateral hypothalamus. Alright, so let's say we lesion the ventromedial hypothalamus, these two blue dots right here. Well, now ghrelin response is going to be more predominant, so our mouse is going to feel hungry all the time and it's going to be fat. So we need a balance between these two hormones to get our mouse just in the right weight range where it's not undernourished or overnourished. An easy way to remember this is that our lateral hypothalamus makes you grow laterally. So if we draw a guy over here, let's say this is a skinny guy, and then this is a fatter version of himself. So the lateral hypothalamus makes you grow laterally, 
while the medial hypothalamus makes you grow medially, so you're going to get thinner. Okay, so that's an easy way to remember this. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a clinical correlate before we end off here, just to hammer the point home. So here we have two obese people, but they're obese for different reasons. Over here on the left, we have someone with Prader-Willi syndrome, which is a mutation on chromosome 15. Now, Prader-Willi does a bunch of things, but one of the things it does in, in correspondence with ghrelin and leptin is that it increases ghrelin levels. So now, this man is going to feel hungry all the time, and that's the cause for his obesity. In contrast, over here, this small child has congenital obesity. So what that causes is an insensitivity to leptin. So our medial hypothalamus right in here in blue is no longer sensitive to leptin, which means this child does not feel satiated at all. So they're gonna keep eating and eating and eating. So in both these people, the ghrelin response is overactive in here because they're on the right because there's more ghrelin and on the left because there is an increase on decrease in leptin sensitivity. So ghrelin response is going to be more active in congenital obesity as well as Prader-Willi. So that's often tested on boards just in case you want to remember these small facts. All right, so I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.